Double Debate on Differing Abilities, Nina Sigletti and Lynn Heller. Double Debate uses games, humor, and imagination to promote discussion about difference, dis, and differing abilities. The current stage of this project is focused on translating an existing analog card game, Double Debate, into an online and extended reality XR series game that can be universally accessed and modified. Initially, we have chosen to create a game in order to facilitate knowledge transfer about differing abilities. However, throughout the project, participants have encouraged us to look at other types of differences, for example, gender fluidity issues, civil rights, etc. It's important to note that differing abilities are traditionally thought of as disabilities. However, they could also be what we might refer to as an extraordinary ability such as synesthesia, which is a neurological phenomena translating one sense impression to another. The most often quoted examples of synesthesia relate to visual and sound properties, i.e. when someone sees a color in their mind's eye upon hearing a sound. We aim to encourage rethinking of preconceived notions of what it means to have a dis or differing ability and to initiate avenues for discussion and debate about our attitudes towards difference. Some of the dis and differing abilities, such as synesthesia, are in fact invisible. The role of games as a catalyst for discussion of various societal and educational issues has elicited vital questions and gained prominent attention. As a result, many contemporary games are focused on formally implicit issues such as health, medicine, disabilities, gender, and education. In the process, games become tools for the creation of broader social awareness. While cross-disciplinary strategies are acknowledged in some parts of contemporary culture, interdisciplinary pedagogy and hybrid knowledge exchange remain a problematic issue. The title of our project is Double Debate. Double is a nonsense word to signify that this is a lighthearted approach to discussing differences. While we emphasize humor, it's important to mention that our approach remains always respectful to differing abilities. We'd also like to clarify our use of the terms dis and differing abilities. Some people refer to themselves as having a disability, a term they believe describes their experience, whereas others favor the term differing abilities in order to avoid stereotyping. We use both so that we respect a variety of perspectives. Dis differing ability is a subject that is normally ignored or euphemistically avoided in many learning and social environments. The optimum goal of our research is to discover alternate methods of play, games, and interactions that transcend age, class, ability, gender, and ethnicity, and then measure strategies and outcomes that could be a focused benefit for other researchers and projects. Our goals can be summarized as, one, develop tools that help users to rethink preconceived notions of what it means to be different, Two, to generate avenues for discussion and debate about attitudes towards difference. Three, to expand pedagogical practice to include more gameplay. Four, to engage in pedagogical and technical innovation in socially responsive ways. To use research creation and co-creation to create games and experiences that exemplify these ambitions. A bit about our history. Double Debate was first conceived as an analog card game by Lynn Hughes and Nina Sigletti, later called the Different Abilities Project. This took place at Technoculture Art and Games Lab, TAG, Hexagram, Concordia University in Montreal. They proposed a card game aimed at exploring ideas and issues related to various physical and mental abilities slash disabilities. Ability Jam, the first brainstorming event, took place on May 2nd to 3rd, 2014 at Concordia University. Following thematically related presentations and a participatory discussion group, participants proceeded to prototype various games. The results of Ability Jam were so promising that a decision was made to further develop the idea. Concurrently, Lynn Hughes, was invited to present a games-related workshop, the Different Abilities Game Card, at the New Media and Video uh, Festival called Transitio MX06 in Mexico City in 2015. Nina Scaletti then invited Lynn Heller and Judith Doyle to form a collaboration between OCAD University and the Tag Lab to develop that presentation. 
Lynn Heller recruited students Anna Liu and Martin Shook from the Department of Graphic Design and the Faculty of Design at OCAD University. Judith Doyle suggested involving Robert Lynn, an artist and designer with acquired brain injuries. The Toronto and Montreal teams crafted different versions of the games in order to expand the workshop potential. The first international double debate workshop was then held in Mexico City. But the game went on to be presented at numerous events in five countries, inviting audiences to participate and contribute feedback towards its development. Over the subsequent years, the design and information offered on the cards was refined and augmented. We responded to critique of the cards and new developments in games and pedagogy. Through our Canadian workshops in Toronto and international workshops in Montreal, Colombia, the United Kingdom, and Poland, we gathered ideas about developing the game through the use of technology and different game structures. The game, in its analog version, is played with cards that facilitate knowledge transfer about dis and differing abilities within everyday or fantastical scenarios. Essentially, it's a game that encourages role playing and creative problem solving. The use of humor and imagination to create awareness remains the primary goal of the project. To explain the game, we suggest one way to play initially. We use a deck of cards divided into three categories, situation cards, ability cards, and double cards, which are a type of point system. For each round, one situation card and one ability card is turned over from the top of the respective decks. Then a player or team argues the benefits of having that particular ability in the situation, and the other player or team argues the disadvantages. Players try to make up imaginative winning arguments for why a particular differing ability would be a disaster or a real advantage in a given circumstance. At each workshop, we invited participants to uh, first play the game as described. As the game progresses, it becomes a social experience of sharing knowledge and learning together. After the initial gameplay, we also brainstorm about alternate ways that the game can be played. Following this activity, we ask people to co-create with us, which entails working with art and craft supplies as a way to stimulate ideas about how to augment the game with technology. However, we are also interested in exploring inclusive design practices, our card game is targeted at an able-bodied public, but as we have learned through our research, so much dis and differing ability is in fact invisible. And though we are not co-designing for a specific dis or differing ability, we do want to keep general principles of inclusion in mind. In 2018, we received a partnership engagement grant from the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of the Government of Canada. With this support, we launched a new round of workshops to continue exploring ways of addressing dis and differing abilities and gathering feedback on game methodology, particularly how to use digital technology to address a wide range of abilities. Workshop participants have made a great number of suggestions regarding the augmentation of the game. For example, some participants have expressed an interest in including video clips to help describe a situation or to garner more information about a particular dis or differing ability. We have quite a bit of text on the cards that describe situation and abilities. Some people have suggested that the text on the cards could be read aloud, which raises questions of what kind of voice would be suitable. What constitutes an appropriate voice is a loaded question, both from the perspective of linguistics and politics. Can everyone understand the language and accent of the narrator? How could we possibly find a voice that is representative of all the different socioeconomic age and or gender perspectives? In our workshops, the question of analog versus digital versions comes up frequently. On one hand, participants commented positively on the enjoyment, the fun that they had. So we have tried to imagine a way to echo this whimsy in a digital version. We wonder how to preserve and promote humor in the digital format. The analog game has already proven to have helped raise our profile on the national and international stages. The digital version will have further reach. A Creative Commons licensing model is used for dissemination and sustainability. Recently, we have received support from eCampus Ontario to translate the analog double debate card game into a digital version. 
Our future research questions include the following. How does the embodied experience of XR lead to a deeper understanding of other people's differences? How can design methods, co-creation, and research creation within 3D environments help to develop knowledge exchange of dis and differing abilities? How can the technologies of XR allow us the communal experience of humor and imagination that are an essential element in breaking down barriers to understanding? The consideration of an XR format allows for different languages and cultural diversity. In the case of language differences, the digital game could have a translation function. We could also modify the game based on solutions that people with dis or differing abilities have designed for themselves. For example, in one of our workshops, a participant suggested that we could include echolocation as a feature. Some people who are blind have adapted echolocation as an alternate means to facilitate mobility. The participant suggested that echolocation could enhance immersion in the game. The refreshed landscape of augmented and virtual reality technologies, XR, with its emphasis on portability, affords new opportunities for innovative interdisciplinary adventures. Using inclusive co-design in partnership with students and established professionals, our project investigates knowledge creation, transfer, and pedagogical practice through XR technology, play, humor, and games. Throughout community involvement and adherence to both established and future thinking inclusivity will be guiding principles, along with being integral to the gameplay itself. The intersection of inclusivity, educational games, and XR is a potential arena for the advancement of pedagogy for the field of disability studies. Our team will uh, develop this XR game that takes advantage of our ability to create worlds that encourage collaborative visualization and embodied understanding of difference for a public that's becoming more and more accultured to XR. Using methodologies such as design collaboration, co-creation, and gameplay through workshops and community consultation to stimulate communication, ideation, and understanding, we are bringing together a unique mix of disciplines to create an original approach to exploration and research. This initiative proposes marrying emerging technologies with knowledge dissemination to challenge deeply ingrained societal attitudes, using cutting-edge gaming and scientific visualization tools to expand our acceptance of difference is a contemporary solution to an age-old issue. We seek to transform technology as it impacts on our behaviors and us. We would like to thank our initial funding sponsor, the Social Studies and Humanities Research Council of Canada, along with OCAD University and eCampus Ontario for their generosity and invaluable support. We have been the beneficiaries of the energy, advice, smarts, and enthusiasm of a number of research assistants and colleagues. We would like to thank them all from the bottom of our hearts.